Live from downtown Bakersfield, 23 ABC News starts now. Three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. And there it is. 50 years ago this morning, the Apollo 11 Saturn V rocket lifting off from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. We'll take a look back at this historic day. And after winning a case against ag company Monsanto, a man's learning he may not get as much of a reward as he thought. Those details are straight ahead. And a good morning to you. Thanks for tuning in to 23 ABC News at 430 on this Tuesday. I'm Mike Hart. I'm Danielle Kern-Camp. Let's bring in Chief Meteorologist Elena Rusk. Yeah, we definitely should. We should. In any second now. And get a quick check of the forecast. Yeah, she's coming. <laughs> oh, there she is. Yeah. She's here. Good. I'm just standing here. I'm oh. ready. Let's talk about the cooler <laughs> weather. got a little confused. It's all good. <laughs> so I was up at Shaver Lake this weekend for my birthday. Mm -hmm. Brought home that cool air. You're welcome. Oh, oh thank, thank you. you. Really nice. Yeah. yeah, so we were in the 100s over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Dropped to 99 yesterday. Today, 98. Tomorrow, about the same. Thursday, 97. Okay, you're not really seeing a fall in temperatures, but they're coming by the end of the week. So a beautiful live picture this morning. Clear and calm at this hour. We're not talking about any clouds really coming through today. It will be sunny and stable, but breezy. And that onshore flow is... is what is keeping us sunny and seasonal. So we have the 60s and 70s for the county right now, depending on which city you're in, climbing up to those mid, up, mid to upper 70s by 8 a.m., mid 80s by 11 a.m., mid 90s this afternoon, looking to top out at 98, about 5 p.m. That is right on track for average here in Bakersfield. But I have below average temperatures coming at the end of the weekend. Those are really exciting. As for our traffic countywide, all the highways are open, but I wanted to show you we have some slowing here. Northbound on the 5, approaching the 46 due to a stalled vehicle there. No injuries, but people are having to go around the big rig, which is blocking the slow lane. Let's come down to Bakersfield because this one may be a big issue. A reported hit and run with injuries about 20 minutes ago on the 99 southbound near Ming Avenue. We're hearing that the car is stalled. There may be some pretty bad injuries here, so no slowing showing up just yet, but that may cause some slowing here over the next hour or so. This morning, Sheriff Donnie Youngblood will bring us an update on the shooting involving a sheriff's deputy that left a deputy injured and the suspect hospitalized. Four, four, five. Subject is down, still in possession of the knife. My unit is bleeding excessively. Small at five. Suspect shot three, four times in the chest and in the pelvis. He's alert and breathing. That's just a portion of the radio traffic from Sunday morning's shooting. At a press conference today, the sheriff's expected to release more of that conversation, plus body cam video. Family members have identified the man who was shot as 27-year-old Reginald Anderson. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition, but it has been upgraded to stable. KCSO telling 23 that the deputy is now home recovering. That press conference expected to begin this morning at 10 a.m. Firefighters are working to get a brush fire in San Jose under control, and they're now saying it is clear. Two homes were destroyed and a dog died as the fire moved rapidly through the area. Cal Fire saying that at the rate the flames were spreading, they worried it would reach up to 200 acres. Crews requested six air tankers and other equipment to help put the fire out. They were able to contain it at only 47 acres. We are halfway through Amazon's Prime Day sale, but as shoppers took to the web, protesters hit the streets. Amazon workers were on the streets of San Francisco trying to bring attention to warehouse working conditions. The protesters said they're concerned about fulfilling orders and those working conditions. Amazon workers in other cities and countries also protested on Prime Day. An Amazon spokesperson touted the company's $15 an hour minimum wage and defended the workplace environment. Obesity is a major problem in Kern County. According to the Department of Public Health, Kern County is the second most obese county in the state. In this week's California Health, 23 ABC Scott Sheehan sat down with health officials about what they're trying to do to make the residents in the county less obese and trying to lessen the health risks associated with obesity. That's coming up at 630. Meantime, small business owners impacted by the recent earthquakes will soon get some relief. The Small Business Administration will be hosting a free webinar at Cal State Bakersfield tomorrow from noon until 1 p.m. It will be held at the Small Business Development Center on campus. At this webinar, people can learn about financial relief that's available to help get their business back on its feet. 
We have a link where you can register online. It's on our website, turn to 23.com. And this morning, the Board of Supervisors will give their feedback on a proposed response plan for potential power outages. In the midst of wildfire season, PG&E and SoCal Edison are utilizing public safety power shutoffs throughout the state. Today, the county's emergency council will present their response plan to these potential outages. Supervisors will be meeting this morning beginning at 9 a.m. Hundreds of people are still trying to get back to normal to normal life after two back to back earthquakes hit the areas of Ridgecrest and Trona on July 4th and 5th. So in this moment of human kindness, a local grocery store is doing their part to help them out. Steiner Brothers posted this picture on Facebook yesterday saying they know many of their customers, friends and family members who work at Steiner Brothers uh, and shop at Steiner Brothers in Ridgecrest have been affected by the earthquakes. Because of that, they stepped in to make a $10,000 donation and that's that check there uh, to the Salvation Army in Ridgecrest to help with disaster relief efforts. The company says the money will go to emergency shelter, food service, social services and more in Ridgecrest and Trona. The company went on to say they believe it's important to pull together during this time of crisis. In your ag report, avocados are really expensive right now, and it's not just because of tariffs. The cost of avocados has tripled in less than a month, and the reasons for the price jump range from new international tariffs to a bad growing season in Mexico. That's America's main supplier of avocados. Avoprice.com, a Mexican-based produce monitoring group, says some avocado trucks have been hijacked, but that the main reasons for higher prices are low supply and a growing demand. Demand. Even though I'm addicted to avocados, I will not buy avocados right now until the price uh, comes back down. It's a bummer. <laughs> I love avocados. I would like to be able to purchase them on a regular basis given they're in season. Some retailers are saying their avocado prices have jumped 96% in just three weeks. A federal judge on Monday reduced an $80.3 million award levied against Monsanto to just over $25 million. Edwin Hardiman of Sonoma County said the company's Roundup weed killer caused his non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. The judge ruled although the jury's decision to award punitive damages was, quote, reasonable, the size of that award was, quote, constitutionally impermissible. Hardiman's case against Monsanto is the first to be tried in federal court. Thousands of similar cases are still pending at the federal or state level. Activists are not happy today that the EPA loosened regulations on a pesticide that's known to be highly toxic to honey and bumblebees. The EPA announced it was dropping restrictions on sufoxiflor so it could be used on 190 million acres of crops. That was just days after the USDA announced it would stop tracking honeybee colony loss. Critics say it was a way to make it hard to track how chemicals like sufoxiflor devastate bee populations. We are less than 65 days away from the Kern County Fair and the Department of Food and Agriculture, along with Kern County 4-H, are making sure that you're aware of the potential health risks associated with farm animals. The CDFA and the California Department of Public Health for Animal Exhibitors released this notice. It's reminding you to take precautions around farm animals at the fair. This all comes a week, or just several weeks, after a two-year-old boy died from E. coli in San Diego after visiting the County Fair Livestock Displays there. The notice reminds you to wash your hands after touching or visiting the animals, not to put things in your mouth around animals, and that pregnant women, the elderly, and kids under five should all take precautions or just avoid the animal areas. 50 years ago today, the Saturn V rocket launched from Kennedy Space Center, Florida, and sent Apollo 11 into orbit. Three, two, one, zero, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff, 32 minutes past the hour, liftoff on Apollo 11. This week we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11's historic mission to the moon. It was Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin in the Lunar Module Eagle who landed on the moon's surface at the Sea of Tranquility. Armstrong said, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. 
probably one of the most famous quotes ever. Right, yeah. and one of those moments in history where everybody knows exactly where they were oh, yeah. to see it. Yeah, as many people watching from school, just incredible. And I love watching those old videos. As we take a look at our dry weather here at home, we have a little bit of onshore flow that's keeping temperatures sunny and seasonal instead of the 100s we had for the weekend. It's another day of upper 90s like yesterday. So it's taken us all night to cool down to these 60s and 70s countywide. Really a mild morning out there. Moderate air quality, clear skies, a nice day ahead as we get to 98 here in Bakersfield. That's right on track for average for this time of year. You see mid to upper 90s for the rest of the valley and some mid 90s up into the Kern River Valley. 94 in Kernville, 93 in Isabella, 85 in Tatchby and Fraser Park this afternoon. Cool spot is Pine Mountain Club at 78. Hot spot Ridgecrest at 106 this afternoon. Some 100s for Cal City and Edwards too. But we're cooling down at the end of the week and I'll show you that in our extended forecast coming up. Still to come, we are talking Emmys this morning. We'll take a look at the nominees for the 71st Primetime Emmy Awards. And the trailer is out for the new Kingsman prequel. A look at the action that started it all next on 23ABC. Neil Armstrong reported back when he received the good wishes. Thank you very much. We know it will be a good flight. Good luck and Godspeed. <laughs> Welcome back. As we talk about our traffic, thankfully no injuries involved in this one here, but northbound five, there is a stalled big rig in the slow lane that's causing some slowing there. If you're headed up toward the 46, sliding back out to the rest of the county, you see the five up and down the valley looks good. Our other passes are wide open. We are keeping a close eye on this situation here. You can see it's still crawling southbound on the 99, approaching a crash that looks to be just south of Ming Avenue. The CHP saying this was a hit and run with injuries, but they're also reporting that all lanes are now open, which which is good news. So this traffic has been backed up for a while, but it should start flowing over the next 10 to 15 minutes as everybody is able to move through. And now that things are no longer blocked. IKEA is ready to shut down its only factory in the US. About 300 jobs will be lost when that factory in Danville, Virginia closes in December. IKEA says the high cost of raw materials is driving that decision. Production will now be shifted to Europe. The nut butter market in the U.S. is said to be worth nearly $4 billion and yogurt maker Chobani wants in. The company is introducing a new product, Greek yogurt with nut butters. The new line includes a variety of combinations, including plain Greek yogurt with almond butter, mm -hmm. vanilla Greek yogurt with cashew mm. butter, and chocolate Greek yogurt with hazelnut butter. Chobani says it will eventually add a peanut butter product. The <laughs> new line hits grocery store shelves this week. Still healthy, right? Yeah, sure. Okay. Video game, game chain GameStop is reimagining its stores. The company said it's to try and lure more people in. Now, under this concept, gamers will have more chances to test out games and take part in what GameStop is calling, quote, homegrown esports leagues. In entertainment news, Emmy nominations are out this morning. Expect a lot of attention for the final seasons of HBO's Game of Thrones and Veep. HBO's Chernobyl should also get a lot of recognition, along with Netflix's Central Park 5 miniseries, When They See Us. The awards themselves will be given out September 22nd. The nominations are expected to be announced at 8.30 this morning. Hollywood is talking prequels and sequels today. Check this out. Real power lies in understanding who it is you're truly fighting. And how they can be defeated. It's your first look at The King's Man, a prequel to Matthew Vaughn's Kingsman movies. Vaughn returns as the director. The King's Man lands in theaters next February. 35 years after the last Starfighter. Did you ever see this? No. no? Yeah, I saw it in the theaters too. Oh. Uh, one of the first films to substantially use CGI. A sequel is finally on the way. It was a little cheesy, but it was, it was funny. Writer-producer Gary Whitta confirms on Twitter that he's working on the original films, uh, working with the original film's creator on a follow-up. No plot details are available yet, 
We don't know if any of the original actors will be back. Just stay tuned. <laughs> this sequel did not take nearly as long. Director John Krasinski confirms on his Twitter account that A Quiet Place 2 is coming. Krasinski, who also starred in the thriller along with his wife Emily Blunt, said filming is underway for the follow-up to last year's surprise hit. Local media in western New York State report residents of the community of Alcott are excited to have Hollywood come to town. A Quiet Place 2 is due in theaters next Next March. That was so creepy. So creepy. <laughs> well, won't be in person, but we're helping you see today's partial lunar eclipse. It starts at 407 Eastern time today and goes about five hours. Peak eclipse happens just after 530 Eastern time. Now, according to the Royal Astronomical Society, that's when 65% of the moon's surface is going to be eclipsed. So if you want to see today's partial eclipse, you are going to have to live stream it because, of course, it's happening on the other side of the world. The Royal Museum Greenwich is streaming that event. Pretty cool that it lasts so long because depending on your schedule, you're going to get a chance to see it. Exactly. Yeah. And for those who don't know, Greenwich is the prime meridian. So that's oh, over okay. in London. Yeah, the opposite side of the world. That's why we can't see it here, which is a bummer. Yeah. Those are always so fascinating. I know. Yeah. Thank you for that coverage, Alyssa. Uh, so here at home, as we talk about our weather, we have 60s and 70s. For most of Kern County, you see it's 56, the top of Breckenridge, 59 in Bear Valley Springs and down in Pine Mountain Club, 58 at this hour. In Bakersfield, the 74 feels really nice because we have moderate air quality and clear skies if you want to head out for a morning run. And and then we do have an onshore flow today, keeping temperatures about the same as yesterday, which was 99. Today is 98, and that's right on track for average with the moderate air quality. It's a hot afternoon ahead, but it's sunny and seasonal tomorrow. Much of the same, but see how we're digging in a little bit of a trough. That's just more cool ocean air trying to come down from Alaska and feed into the state of California. Now, by Thursday, we're going to have a pattern setting up to give us some more cooling heading into the end of the week. But the future cast is leaving us pretty sunny the next couple afternoons. There could be some of those high thin clouds out there. We are going to see the monsoonal moisture down in Arizona, trying to push our way heading into next week, but that's not until next week. So as sunshine across the board, maybe some high thin clouds Thursday. Watch how we drop with a fresh breeze Friday to 94. That should keep our air quality moderate all week and take those temperatures down below average Thursday, but really more noticeable Friday into Saturday. Warming back up average early next week. There's some of that cloud cover Monday as we try and get some of that monsoonal moisture pushing towards our deserts. But after that, just hot back in those 100s yet again. Incredible incredible that so far here into mid July we've only had 11 days of 100s so far this year. Usually it feels like it's about 15 to 20. So as we talk about the Kern River Valley, you have low 90s right on through Saturday. Tatchby and Fraser Park, some mid 80s today, low 80s to wrap up your week and head into your weekend. Still to come, a fishy story out of New Zealand involving two overly eager sushi lovers. How far would you go <laughs> to get your sushi? Huh? Pretty far. Well, I don't think it's far as these two, but we'll show it to you next. And later, a pyramid reopens its tombs after over 50 wow. years. That's coming up next on 23ABC. A couple of penguins went out for sushi and they had to be removed twice. The little blue penguins were spotted outside a New Zealand train station getting down underneath a sushi truck. They were released back into Wellington Harbor, but then get this, they crossed traffic and went right back to the same it's sushi that old place. Why did the penguin cross the road? To get back to the sushi to place, To get some more spicy course. garlic edamame. Yeah, wildlife officials think that they were shopping around for a place to nest, and if you're wondering, they're okay. They're not injured well, yeah, or anything. A place to nest and have a food source. Yeah, yeah they're just a little full. Egypt is opening an ancient 4,600-year-old pyramid once again to tourists, the so-called Bent Pyramid. It's about 25 miles south of Cairo. It's been closed since 1965 for repairs. This massive projects, uh, project included fortifying the entrance and inner rooms that lead to the burial chamber. Archaeologists say they found hidden tombs as well as mummies and masks during nearby excavations that started last year. I thought you weren't supposed to disturb the pyramids. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Well, this is something that we're sure about. Breakfast okay. chain IHOP, they're commemorating their anniversary today by selling a stack of their signature buttermilk pancakes for only 58 cents. It's a nod to its founding in 1958. IHOP was founded by two brothers, Al and Jerry Lappin, who discovered their inspiration in the tropical taste of coconut syrup, which I've never tried, uh, in a local restaurant that's centered around pancakes, of course. The first restaurant opened in a suburb of Los Angeles, but today's deal is available all over the U.S. from 7 a.m. to 
7 p.m. Plenty of time to get your breakfast for dinner or your breakfast for breakfast or whatever. Breakfast for lunch. Yeah, I exactly. love all of it. Yeah, that's a fun one for the family. All right, so we're at 74 here in Bakersfield. You're waking up. That's about the same as yesterday. We have clear, calm conditions, moderate air quality, which we love, and seasonal temperatures. The next couple afternoons, a breeze on Friday takes us down below average to the mid 90s Friday and Saturday. You're seeing some sunshine out there, maybe some high thin clouds, but really we are at or below average for the next week, and then we'll try and get some 100s coming back by the middle of next next week. Still to come in our next hour, the president standing by his tweets will tell you how Democrats are responding this morning. We have that and much more straight ahead in our first full hour of news. Keep it locked in. This is 23 ABC.